When it comes to the EV revolution, you're much more likely to see an electric car on the road than an electric motorcycle. In this episode of EV Rider, we're taking a look at why there aren't more electric motorcycles on U.S. roads. California Bay Zero Motorcycles is believed to be the largest manufacturer by far of electric motorcycles here in the U.S. and around the world. According to MotorcyclesData.com, Zero produced about 3,500 motorcycles in 2020. The 2021 total wasn't available yet. Next up is Energica, an Italian brand for which I was unable to find production numbers, but it is believed to be producing fewer bikes than Zero and has far fewer U.S. dealers. Then there's Harley-Davidson, which shipped 387 live wires for the 2021 model year and is projecting to ship 957 live wire ones for the 2022 model year. That's according to an investor presentation by Livewire, which Harley has spun off into a standalone brand. The Livewire brand's dealership structure is still being reconfigured into standalone Livewire showrooms, along with adding the line in some Harley Davidson locations while discontinuing it in others. Then there are the startups, like Damon, which is still in the pre-production stage, and a few others that for the sake of time we won't be mentioning in this story. Outside of Harley-Davidson, no other legacy motorcycle maker has an EV motorcycle for sale in the U.S., although BMW does make an EV maxi scooter aimed at around town riders, and KTM has an electric dirt bike. A key question is why more established motorcycle companies haven't launched EVs like their automotive counterparts have, such as GM, Ford, Volkswagen, and many others. The answer is, at least in part, unlike cars, the technology is harder to get right because of space and weight constraints that cars don't have. While EV evangelists will correctly point out that electric motorcyclists, such as the ones pictured here, have been crisscrossing the U.S. and other countries for years now, their EVs can't quite match their gasoline counterparts on range or refueling convenience, although some of the bikes are getting close. In the U.S., motorcycles tend to be used as secondary vehicles by most riders, with many of them going on weekend recreational rides in excess of 125 miles or more. Energica currently makes the longest range electric motorcycles, estimating its EVA Rebel has a highway range of 123 miles. Zero's longest range motorcycle can go an estimated 113 miles at 70 miles per hour. By comparison, many gasoline motorcycles intended for cross-country travel can go more than 200 miles between refills. The problem comes down to the space needed for batteries. For example, Rider Magazine recently averaged 224 miles of range using a 2021 Honda Goldwing over 1,300 miles. The other issue is charging. Chargers take up a bunch of a motorcycle's available space as these photos of a 2020 Zero SRF's 12 kilowatt charging setup show. In the case of the Zero, there are as many as three charging units that collectively add up to 12 kilowatts of available charging speed using level two AC J1772 chargers. Zero is increasing that number to 13 kilowatts in the spring of 2022 through an additional cost firmware update. Energica and Livewire went in a different direction, opting to use their space and voltage setup for CCS DC Level 3 chargers, which can fill a battery faster. The fastest charging zeros can refuel to about 95% in an hour. While the Livewire and Energicas can reach 80% of charge in about 40 minutes. The Energicas and Livewires can use level 2 chargers, but riders will be waiting around for hours for their bikes to charge, since the Livewire 1 only supports a 1.3 kilowatt charging speed, and Energicas are limited to 3 kilowatts. Conversely, the fully optioned Zeros support relatively fast AC charging. Although there aren't many level 2 J1772 chargers currently installed that can put out that much power in the U.S., 
Most U.S. Level 2 chargers are currently limited to 6.6 kilowatts, and some that use shared circuits can be as slow as 3.3 kilowatts. And that's the problem. Every electric motorcycle on sale today is a compromise when it comes to refueling during long distance travel, although charging speeds are constantly improving. To date, the charging infrastructure in the U.S. has developed in a way that requires both fast level 2 and level 3 charging to maximize refueling options and speed. And options are critical given how weak the infrastructure is as compared to the wide availability of gas stations. The cost difference between the two charging platforms is also vastly different. Charging at CCS stations is usually much more expensive. Citing a cost example here in Jacksonville, Florida. At the time of this video's publication, an Electrify America CCS station was charging 43 cents per kilowatt of energy, while several nearby level 2 charge point stations range from free to 14 cents a kilowatt. The Biden plan calls for 500,000 chargers to be built, but it doesn't yet specify in detail what the mix will be between J1772 versus CCS. Based on the budget number passed by Congress and stated number of charges that will be funded, it appears reasonable to conclude the majority of what will be built with public dollars will likely be level 2 J1772 chargers. Currently, the fastest J1772 chargers in the U.S. output 19.2 kilowatts, although there are no motorcycles in production that can accept that much AC current. The fastest U.S. CCS Level 3 chargers can currently output 350 kilowatts, but motorcycles can only take advantage of a small fraction of that power. Energicas, which were the fastest charging bikes in production at the time of this story's publication, currently peak at a 20 kilowatt charging speed, according to the manufacturer's website. Looking at my own personal use case for recreational riding, I have found cities and towns in Florida and Georgia are currently more likely to have level 2 chargers within walking distance of attractions as compared to CCS chargers, which are more likely to be near interstates, at Walmarts or other similar locations. However, motorcyclists with CCS ports will correctly point out that in many cases, the time savings more than make up for any difference in cost or lack of amenities while charging. While the lack of a robust charging infrastructure and technology limitations may currently be holding back some EV motorcycle sales, when it comes to urban riding, that's where EV motorcycles pull out ahead in almost every respect. They usually exceed their gasoline counterparts in performance, fueling, and maintenance costs, although upfront costs do tend to be higher. Ducati, Kawasaki, and Honda are among the traditional motorcycle manufacturers that have EVs in development, but there are no details on when they might be sold here in the U.S. While the overall rollout of EVs seem to be moving at a slower pace on the motorcycle side, the end result will likely be the same. The days of being able to buy gasoline-powered vehicles are numbered. If you found this episode of EV Rider informative, please give it a like and subscribe so I can grow my audience and bring you more new episodes.